Since I was a teenager, I feel like I've always been searching for an answer to life's meaning. I wanted to understand why I had certain thoughts about the world and the people that inhabit it, what will make me happy, and why anything even exists in the first place. It was then that I realized that many other people on this planet have had the exact same issue and some of them wrote books about it. And so it was then that I decided to dive into these books and see if they had an answer for what I was searching for. The first philosophy book that I had ever bought was Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, where he wrote about the practices of Stoicism. And I was instantly hooked on how this book was able to change my perspective on reality. It was exactly what I was looking for, something to challenge and change my own beliefs and the way I go about my life. And that started a little bit of an obsession with philosophy. I read philosophies from different cultures and societies and listened to audiobooks whenever I could and even lectures on YouTube. I noticed that my well-being and my satisfaction for life dramatically increased and I was a lot more open-minded. I don't think I would be half the man I am today without studying philosophy and I attribute a lot of my success to it. Today I want to take you through some of the greatest lessons from all the philosophies that I've learned over the years, the ones that have impacted my life the most and at the end, I want to explain why it's important not to get too attached to a philosophy. Focus on what you can change and don't worry about the rest. This first way of living is from the philosophy of Stoicism and I've talked about this idea in many of my previous videos but it is probably the most impactful. Well, I'm not going to say the most but one of the most impactful so I got to go over it here. You have to differentiate between the things that are under your control and things that aren't. When I used to drive to and from college every day, there was one highway that I would always take and there was always some cop sitting there with a speed gun waiting for these college kids to drive to their classes in the morning. And let me tell you, I got caught several times because I had to speed to get to class. Now during these times when I was sitting in my car waiting for the cop to come back with my license, I would remember this stoic practice. Firstly, that it was my fault that I was speeding anyway. It's my fault that it happened. And also that there's nothing I can do to change this. It's out of my control that I'm gonna get a ticket here. I'm gonna get a ticket. So what I can control is how I'm gonna react to this. So I'd cool myself down by reminding myself that I can keep cool even if this is like the third ticket I've gotten in the past few months. Life is gonna unexpectedly throw you a ton of terrible shit, and you're not gonna know why it did. If you can learn to control your reactions to uncontrollable things, then you can get through pretty much any misfortune in life. Realize you aren't really sh one of the fundamental themes of the Tao Te Ching, which is like the standard book for learning about the Taoist philosophy, is seeking lowly places and not believing that you are above anything. All streams flow to the sea because it is lower than they are. Humility gives it its power. Since I've started this whole social media game, I've had to practice this. I go through periods where I'm having a ton of growth, I'm getting a ton of views, and just everything is working in my favor. And then I'll also go through periods where my growth is not good or even goes backwards. I had a long period of time last year during the pandemic where my Instagram followers were going down and my emotions will react to both of these. When I'm going through a good period of growth, I'll start feeling like I'm the shit and I'll start feeling like my ego is creeping up on me. And then when I have those low periods of growth or no growth, then I'll tell myself that I'm not even worthy of growing on social media, I'm really not doing anything right. And I realized that instead if I just detach myself from any of those expectations and realize that I'm not really special at all and I don't deserve anything more than anyone else, then those negative or positive emotional reactions won't happen and I'll be content whether the content is doing really well or whether it's not doing well. A humble person admits to their mistakes, they have an open mind and they embrace differences. You are not better than anyone else, you're not more special than anyone else and that mindset is very liberating. Now before we get into the next part of the video, I do want to quickly mention the sponsor of today's video, which is Filmora X by Wondershare. A lot of you guys over the years have asked me how I learned to edit and what softwares are best for beginners. It could be very, very tough for beginners for several factors. One is because these softwares usually cost a bunch, and two is because most editing softwares are not beginner friendly in the slightest. A lot of you know that I pride myself on keeping the videos on this channel as high quality as they possibly can be and so much of the features that are built into 
Filmora X are the same effects and transitions and features that I use in my own videos. And they're pre-built into Filmora without any third-party extensions. One of my favorite effects that I use, motion tracking, which you guys have already seen in this video, is built into the software and it only takes a few clicks to implement. It is so easy to use this software. They have built-in titles, LUTs for easy color correction, and a whole bunch of different effects and transitions. As I was playing around with this, I'm honestly kind of jealous how easy it is to do the things that I usually do in my videos in this software. So if you guys want to go check that out and you're interested in learning video editing as a beginner, then you can go to the link in the description and you can download it for free. You are the one that's doing this whole universe. Alan Watts is one of my favorite philosophers. I'm pretty sure I've listened to literally every single lecture you can find here on YouTube. If you don't know him, he is a Western philosopher that teaches Eastern philosophy to people like us in America and allows us to digest it easier. And while I've talked about him a lot and I've talked about how he's both positively and negatively impacted my life, at one point I was going a little cuckoo because of him, there is one thing that he taught me that I will always remember. That I really am this universe, that I am everything that I see around me. If you start to listen to these lectures more and more, you'll start to feel more of what I'm about to try to explain here. So we humans have all decided to agree upon what we define as ourselves, as I. We consider ourselves as this body and nothing outside of it, basically what we can control. But as you start to think about this, the concept of I is a pretty clouded interpretation. How can we say that the things that we do unintentionally or automatically are really us, are really I? Can you really say that it's you that is beating your heart, that is making oxygen flow through your body? Is it really you that's regulating your body at all times? So how is that any different from the automatic things that happen outside of what you call yourself? You see, this I that you've created wouldn't even exist without everything else that is around you because the I implies that other exists. But what you start to realize is that I and other are actually the same thing because one cannot exist without the other. You are also everything that you see outside of you and it's so hard to feel this, especially in Western culture because of how you're brought up and what we're taught is us. But let me try to paraphrase what Alan Watts says about this. Without your eyes, there would be nothing with which to interpret and create light or colors. Without your ears, the sound waves in the atmosphere wouldn't actually create sound. It requires your ears for a sound to be produced in the universe. And without your soft skin, the hardness of wood would not exist. Wood is only hard in relation to a soft skin, which means it is you that is evoking the sounds, the colors, and the textures out of everything in the universe. And this is based on the organism that you are. You are a lens in which the universe can view itself. And with this mindset, you really start to enjoy the little things in reality and just appreciating everything that you are capable of doing as an organism that you are and that you are creating this universe. It gives you a lot of power. And I know that ever since I've started to feel this more, life has just become much more enjoyable. Now, I wanna stress something important about not getting too attached to one philosophy or idea, which might be a whole philosophy in of itself. And I said I was gonna go over this at the start of the video. If you start religiously following any one philosophy, it can lead you down a very narrow-minded rabbit hole. Philosophy of that one thing will start to become an obsession, and then in every situation you're in, you'll think, what would the philosopher or philosophy X make me do? While this certainly can help in many situations, always remember to keep your mind open because it might limit you as to what you should actually do or what you're capable of doing if you're so rigidly stuck to one philosophy. And instead, try to culminate a integration of a bunch of different philosophies into your own optimal philosophy. And so this is what I now do. I just have a bunch of different philosophical ideas that I take from different philosophies and I apply them to my life and I don't get stuck to one of them specifically. So I have like my own philosophy and I guess that's kind of what I wrote about. That's like the whole idea of the self-help book that I put out. It's just a culmination of all of that. You guys are probably wondering what books I have read in terms of philosophy because I said that I read a lot of books in philosophy. So I'm gonna link some of my favorites in the description below if you wanna go buy those on Amazon, go check them out because they're amazing. 
amazing and they've impacted my life tremendously. If you want to get into philosophy, there's some good ones down there. So go to the link in the description for those. Thank you to all the patrons on this channel on Patreon. This is a platform where I'm putting out exclusive content, videos, blog posts, podcasts that can't be found anywhere else and also giving one-on-one -on -one advice on there. If you want to check that out, go to the link in the description patreon.com slash Cole Hastings. Let me know what philosophies or what ideas have impacted your life the most. I'm interested to hear and I'm always open to hearing more about anything in life, really, that's going to make me think. So thank you so much for watching till the end. Appreciate it. Helps me out a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video.